What's going on guys, we're Tottenham TV here and back with another episode of Good Morning Tottenham today. Um, good morning to all of you, hope you're doing well. Um, we got obviously some very good news last night um, in regards to the impending a number of things um, we're going to get through. We are taking calls just to let you know um, that the rendezvous link is in the community section for all our channel members. So if you want to come on and have your say about any of today's topics, um, go and click the link in the community section and you can come on and give your opinions and also if you want to send in your opinions in a super chat or send in your tweets um uh, if you send in of uh, tag us at we are tottenham tv on twitter uh, for any content any breaking news or any or any opinions you want us to react to um we will be looking at twitter as well so make sure um you get involved you engage with the stream um it's glad to see you all hope you're hope you're all doing well no ben again today but tonight for the watch along against chelsea he will be here so don't worry you're not going to be missing him for too long uh, i can see everyone spamming where is ben uh he unfortunately was at a wedding um many congratulations to uh um, his good friend uriel um on his wedding yes last night so um ben was up in um i'm not sure where he was but he went up somewhere uh for a wedding so that's where he is um i'm here keeping the lights on as they say uh doing the god's work so um let's get into it christian romero as of last night, at Atalanta accepted Tottenham's 55 million euro bid, which according to Romano, 50 million plus 5 million add-ons. Atalanta finally accepted the bid after um, Demiral and, um, was pretty much confirmed. He is about to go to Atalanta on loan, um, um, on a years-long loan, I believe, with an obligation to buy on that and Romano has tweeted today Tottenham are preparing the paperwork today for Romero to sign uh, to uh, preparing the paperwork today for Romero to sign after an agreement was found with Atalanta the Argentine will soon fly into London to complete the move um, this is very exciting uh, he's going to be in London he's going to be part of the team next season now it's pretty much confirmed we're just uh, pretty much awaiting the official announcement which I expect in the next 48 hours um, Spurs will probably officially announced Christian Romero as a Tottenham Hotspur player um, he uh, all these stats are going around about how effective he was um, in the Serie A last season it's well documented now he was the number one centre back in Serie A last season um and I think this is a deal that represents um, a, a rebuild of the back line with Toby Odevierald going. We needed a, a massive upgrade in terms of um, quality and not just quality, but we needed someone who was hungry as well, who was getting near the top of his game and um, has, um, although he doesn't have the most experience, he's played in Copa America finals, winning them and keeping a clean sheet. Um, he did get Serie A Defender of the Year. He's played Champions League football with Atalanta and, um, I'm, I'm, and he's used to basically playing in a very attacking team um, like Atalanta are and he's he's used to being on the front foot he's used to being aggressive and we're going to need that it's important that um, we know as well um, there are reports that Spurs are not finished in their centre-back search and once Sanchez gets out the door they will be looking for a second centre-back hopefully to partner um, Romero or to compete with Dyer and Roden so hopefully we get another one through the door um, who is similar quality and is able to compete with the likes of um, uh, Roden who obviously had a great Euros hopefully I'm hoping he can obviously stake a claim for the first team Eric Dyer um, looks like he's the one um, there's no links uh, to him leaving so it looks like he's set to stay and to be fair to Dyer um, I, I prefer Dyer to Sanchez I think Dyer is a better centre back the only thing with Dyer is again uh, occasionally he'll cost you points and he's let us down many times last season but there were times when he was at the top of his game and I remember the game against Man City he was exceptional um, didn't put a foot wrong and he has that in him so it's all about co um, coaxing that out of him getting the best out of Eric Dyer um, and maybe Romero can help do that and maybe Romero can be the player who improves the defenders around him and not just improves and not just brings his own quality but hopefully around him he can also help Dyer and Roden and and um, and whoever else comes in improve themselves because we we need him to not just um, do his job we need him to be a leader that's the truth we need him to marshal the defense we need him um, 
to be t- to in instructing people what where to go, what to do. It's not um, it's not enough just him um, doing a great job for himself. We need him to help the whole defence, and that is going to be a big big job. And he's only twenty three years of age, so I think maybe we need a bit of patience. I think everyone's very excited, me included, that we're getting a very good quality defender through the door. But I think we need to be a bit patient in terms of he's adapting to a new league, a new style. He's very used to a very specific system at Atalanta, which is extremely aggressive, one of the most aggressive teams in Europe when it comes to pressing. Always, he, he will always be um, in the opposition half. Literally, his average position last year was near the um, near the opposition half. Um, he's always going to be in and around that position. So he's going to have to adjust to maybe playing a bit deeper, maybe not being as aggressive, especially in his early days. And we're going to have to see how he adapts to it. But at the moment, um, this deal is pretty much about going to happen any t- at any point. Um, it's going to basically... Um, in in the next forty eight hours, I think he's it's going to be confirmed. He's he's going to be flying to London, and um, this is set to happen. So um, I want to know your opinions. Are you excited about the prospective Romero deal? I want to know if, if any of you maybe have reservations because obviously it's it's come very very positively um, to most people. But I wonder if people have any reservations about maybe is he is is he younger? Is he not not have enough experience. Are we relying too much on one very very good season at Atalanta? Is he too used to playing a very aggressive style at Atalanta, and will he be able to adjust? Um, is he the leader that we need? Is he um, is he at 23 years of age? Does he need more experience? Um, and what about the outlay? 50 million plus five million. Um, is that a good price for a player of his quality and age? Or do you think we're overpaying? And is it a good thing we're overpaying? I want to know people's opinions. Maybe send it in a super chat or a tweet and we'll get right on to that. But that is the news at the moment when it regards to Romero. Um, he is set to fly to London um, in the next 48 hours to secure the deal um, for Tottenham. And that's pretty much uh, it's a matter of time now whether this deal gets done. It's not a matter of if but when, which is very, very positive. Um, let's move on to the next story and the next story comes from Matt Law of the Telegraph and he's talking about Harry Kane who again obviously today hasn't turned up for another day of training um, as expected he's expected to uh, turn up at the end of the week however Matt Law claims Harry Kane is currently in Florida and is expected um, back in Tottenham training by the end of the week the striker missed a second day of pre-season training but Spurs sources believe he is planning a, a return over the weekend and he went on to say that Harry Kane believes um, the the whole for uh, for uh, anger and rage over him missing training has been overblown, and um, that that's what ha- what Harry Kane is saying. Um, he's currently isolating, um, so uh, uh, which is uh, it's um, it's very difficult to know what the truth is because first of all we're hearing from yesterday in the morning from Charlie Eccleshare. Kane is missing training and he doesn't intend to come back to training um, unless a transfer is secured and sealed. Then we're hearing from the Daily Mail, Sammy Mockbell, that he is um, isolating after a trip from the Caribbean and... um, He's uh, he's going to be uh, he can't return to training until he gets a negative test at the end of the week. However, he purposefully came back late, which is why he has to isolate and he's he's going to be back late from training. So it's not a sense of a misunderstanding; it's a sense of he purposefully came back from holiday at a certain time so that he'll have to isolate and can only come back at the end of the week. And now we're hearing from Matt Law that he's in Florida and he's only going to be back from Florida at the end of the week. Um, and that's why uh he's going to be he and that that's why he's going to be isolating after a trip from Florida so it's a lot of conflicting reports Um, I'm not really sure what the truth is or where to go Um, it's um, it's hard to get your head around what's true and what's not what's being pumped out from the Kane camp what's coming out from the Tottenham camp Um, a lot of it is uh, is very very interesting I'm not really sure what um, what the truth is when it comes to Harry Kane it's difficult to uh, pass fact from fiction really it's difficult to separate it so I don't know. Um, is he in Florida? It seems that's the latest. He's in Florida. So hopefully he comes back and maybe when he comes back, it can all get sorted. There is big breaking news when it comes to Jack Grealish today and his move to Man City. Grealish is on the verge of his £100 million move um, to Man City. According to The Athletic, Man City are on the verge of agreeing a deal with Aston Villa over a record-breaking deal for Jack Grealish, which would be a Premier League record of £100 million. Uh, The Athletic obviously reported in June that City were preparing a bid um, for the England international after 
negotiations began between the two clubs, Villa are on course to accept City's offer and the 25-year-old is now set to become the most expensive British transfer um, of all time. That accolade previously held by Gareth Bale of, after his move to Real Madrid back in 2013, it will surpass the £89 million that, Pog- Pog- that Man United paid for Pogba back in 2016. Provided everything goes to plan, personal terms will be finalised and a medical taken before Grealish completes his move to the Etihad. Um, this is after, by the way, last year, which Grealish signed a new five-year deal um, uh, for, for Aston Villa um, only a year ago. So only after a year has he uh, looks like he's going to be um, on his way to Manchester City. Um, how this affects the Kane deal um, is, is hard to say. It's conflicting reports um, in terms of that as Romano is claiming that it's going to be very difficult and complicated and unlikely that um, Man City are able to sign both Grealish and Harry Kane. On the flip side, you've got Sam Lee of The Athletic, who's a Man City correspondent. He's claiming that it's perfectly feasible for Man City to be able to afford Kane and Grealish and even if... The, and even with the view of them selling a few senior players, they've already received um, um, some hefty fees for some fringe players already this summer. So he believes it's more than feasible they can get out that sort of outlay. And he looks to, and he points to Chelsea um, last summer, um, which um, when he says that if a City were to sell Grealish and Kane, it wouldn't even surpass what Chelsea spent last summer. So it is definitely feasible they can afford both. Um, it looks as though this one's n- nearing the conclusion, um, nearing for conclusion. So I want to know in the comment section or, or, or your tweet, said in your opinions, will um, the Grealish still affect what happens with Harry Kane? I want to know what you think of the truth is of Harry Kane as well. Is he isolating? Is he in Florida? Um, is he isolated from the Caribbean? Um, I want to know know what people's opinions are obviously we are going to be taking calls so i'm looking forward to what people's opinions are on that but at the moment the latest of harry kane is he's currently in florida and he's going to be back at the end of the week and hopefully um his future can be sorted in one way or another once he sits down with harry kane and maybe he can have a chat with nuno as well and uh, we can move forward at the moment with harry kane um i'm undecided how i believe um uh, we should deal with the harry kane situation just because we, we it can go either way when you um when you sign sell a player for big money um like Kane for 150 million and then you sign a bunch of players um in replacement and revamp the squad um didn't work when Tottenham sold Bale for 85 million it didn't really work when um Liverpool sold Suarez for 80 million it didn't really work when uh, Barcelona they sold Neymar for 200 million um they didn't really get the replacements they needed they bought Coutinho for 140 and they bought Usman Dembele for 100 million and um, those two didn't quite work out so it really is hard to spend the money but then you got to look at Liverpool they sold Coutinho for 140 million and then were able to spend that money on Van Dijk and Allison and went on to win the Champions League and the league so it all depends on Tottenham it's hard to get excited about a potential future without Kane even if the money just because any uh, anything to get excited about was all theoretical um, the fact that we, we you know, the, th- the fact with Kane staying, if we Kane stays, we you know what you're going to get. I'm I'm convinced that if Kane does stay, however people think of Harry Kane and what he's doing right now, if Kane does stay, I'm sure he'll knuckle down. I'm sure he's going to be um, back to his best, and I'm sure he's going to try his hardest for the team when he's on the pitch. I don't believe Kane is the type of player who is going to be sulking um, and he's going to be um, on the pitch just not trying his hardest and letting a year pass him by, especially when he's 28 years of age I can't I don't think he can afford to let a year pass him by at this stage of his career and I think he's going to even if I reckon even if he stays another year and, he, and he'll probably think all right if I do stay another year maybe we can win a trophy um an FA Cup um a League Cup or a Conference League bloody hell um I don't think he'll be looking at that but if we can win a domestic trophy then he might see that as a good parting gift um a, a part, good way to part ways if he does leave next summer so I don't believe despite his actions now um, if he is to be here at the end of the season we're not going to see anything but the best of Harry Kane and um, you know maybe it'll take a bit of time to see him to settle back into the team but I believe we will see the best of Harry Kane but on the flip side if we do leave if he does leave like I don't know how to feel about that just yet just because I don't know it depends on the recruitment it depends on it's all theoretical 
you can't you can't say it's a positive until we get the right people through the door um for uh, for something that's affordable so it's hard to say i can't quite say just yet that um i definitely would rather sell him because um selling him um it can only be a positive thing in theoretical circumstances whereas um keeping him um is we know is it would be a positive thing despite the fact you're 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 keeping a player who wanted out i still think it would be a positive if he stays in terms of tottenham's team next season are we in um are we definitely better off with him staying or with him leaving i think we're better off uh, for, i think the only sure way of knowing um the positive is him staying because you know we've got a world-class striker in the team. If he leaves, yes, we could spend the money and revamp the squad, but that's all theoretical. Do we get the right people in? Um, our club's going to hold us to ransom because they, we know they know we've got 150 million for Harry Kane, and we know we've got money to spend. Is there is it even feasible to get um, all the players that we need to re properly revamp the squad for that money? It's all theoretical. There's so many moving parts. So I want to know people's opinions. If uh, it's definitely a positive thing if we get the money, or is it if definitely a positive if we keep? Kane I want to know what people got to think but that's the latest anyway, anyway on Harry Kane uh, we'll move on to well let's go quickly to read out the super chat um, it's in Korean so I can't uh, really read it out but it says Kane can't leave Tottenham never so that's all this guy thinks he thinks Kane definitely can't leave Tottenham um, let's look at this latest story from Dan Kilpatrick of the Evening Standard and he says Tottenham are set to turn their attentions to another creative player after agreeing a deal for defender Christian Romero with Sampdoria's Mikel Damsgaard and PSV's Noni Mudueke um, among their targets to revamp their cre uh, creativity. And um, that is some interesting um, news, considering obviously Damsgaard, we know, um, has been um, of interest even before the Euros, but especially after the Euros, um, he's uh, been of interest, especially the way he stepped up in um, Ericsson's absence and the quality of performance he was able to put in. He showed um, he, he was a bright spark in the central areas on the left-hand side. His dribbling was fantastic. He scored a fan two fantastic goals as well. Um, most notably against England, that free kick um, in the semi-final was absolutely fantastic effort. And um, he obviously scored a great goal against Russia, curling 25-yard effort into the top corner. He showed a lot of quality and um, his price would have skyrocketed probably at the Euros. Um, in the article, Dan Kilpatrick went on to say, Damsgaard has been linked with a move to Villa and Liverpool this summer and is valued at around 50 million euros, which is probably half that before the Euros, which would likely be out of reach for Spurs unless they can afford, unless they can offload a number of unwanted players, which looks like to be a running frame theme throughout the summer. Uh, Tottenham are also monitoring their former academy player, Noni Mudueke. So that's a very interesting one because Spurs had him up until um, 2018 and then Pochettino actually let him go and he went on to sign for PSV and he's going from strength to strength um, at PSV um, especially last season he, he had a bit of a breakthrough played 24 games um, scoring seven goals and getting a few assists as well so he seems to um, so he seems to be having a bit of a breakthrough and at 19 years of age England interna England under 21 international he seems to be a player he's only had one cap he seems to be a player on the rise and maybe one will let go too early um it says the move his move to psv definitely paid off according to dan kilpatrick he's, he's getting first team minutes and signs make an impact um he's now being tracked by a host of clubs around europe crystal palace leeds southampton and bayern munich have all inquired about the under 21 west international PSV's valuation is definitely growing for the England under-21 international with every performance, while the departure of Donio Milan to Dortmund um, over the summer has definitely driven up the price for Noni Mudueke. So it's going to be very interesting um, if Tottenham go in for either of them. Um, Mudueke, I think, would be a bit cheap. I can't envisage they're going to demand €50 million Euros for him because he's 19. He's only played 24 games, but he definitely seems a player on the rise. He's, um, I think, I believe he's more comfortable on the right hand side cutting in um on the, on his left foot um he's got a very good long shot on him he's starting to bang in a few goals in the Eredivisie and um he's one which I think Tottenham might think um they let go too early which is a shame um from their point of view um especially because he's English and especially because he's um 
growing in his role and he's starting to be a bit of a star for PSV they like the look of him so uh, maybe Pochettino will be regretting what um, what has happened um, with um, he'll be regretting what's happened uh, with Mudueke and the fact they let him go well, didn't give him a path to the first team and it shows I think it's another example of um, what you could what could have be what could have been if you give a youngster a chance in the first team what they can grow into instead of always having to buy to improve maybe sometimes the answer is in the youth academies and I think Spurs are definitely one of the teams and a lot of teams in the Premier League definitely have to um, start looking at their youth teams and giving them more of a chance um, instead of always buying because I think he's proof of sometimes looking within is um, your best bet. Be interesting to see if we do go in for him, how much we're prepared to pay for him, if we're maybe put off by the thought of rebuying an academy product because we could have had him for free, or if we put that to the back of our mind and think, yes, we let him go on a free, but he's definitely a player we can um, uh, Im- uh, who can improve the team and it's worth rebuying, worth getting him back. Um, so that is the latest from Dan Kilpatrick on, on that. Um, and last story before you know, we start getting callers on and start getting people's opinions on today's stories. Um, it's from Mundo Deportivo. And they say Tottenham are interested in signing Philip Coutinho should Harry Kane leave the club. Um, Mundo Deportivo go and say um, Philip Coutinho could be the star that Tottenham replaced Harry Kane with. The player's agent, Kia Drabchen, is moving to secure a deal and has been in contact with Tottenham. And um, uh, publication FF Polo says Tottenham may be interested in buying Philip Coutinho if Kane ends up leaving Barcelona. If Kane ends up leaving Tottenham, Barcelona are open to a loan or a transfer for him and they expect movement in the last two weeks of the window. Now, Tottenham nearly signed Philip Coutinho two, two years ago um, on the same day that they um, went for Paolo Dybala. Um, it looked like Tottenham were going to get their man on a loan deal um, with Barcelona looking to ship Coutinho out the door. Pochettino obviously had Coutinho at Espanyol, so they knew each other. So it looked like that deal was going to go through. I, for one, um, wasn't that interested in having Coutinho at Spurs. Not because I believe he's a terrible player. I just believe he's very inconsistent for the very high wages uh, he was going to be on and for the price probably you're going to get him for. You're probably better off signing someone else other than a player like Coutinho because despite Coutinho's um, obvious qualities, his long-range shooting, his dribbling ability, um, his passing ability, all fantastic. He's a great attacking midfielder. He's just extremely infuriating and inconsistent. He'll play f- um, one fantastic game in about five games and then he'll be anonymous for the extra four and um, that's the thing with Philip Coutinho I think he's a world-class ability I really believe that um, if you give him space and time and around the penalty box he can make you pay and he's had periods in his career where he has been um, performing week in week out. I remember that period where for six months when he was trying to get that move to Barcelona he was dynamite he was absolutely brilliant one of the best players in the Premier League um, but since he's moved to Barcelona hasn't quite um, lived up to expectations um, in fact they they've uh, kind of been holding back on him they haven't been um they haven't been playing him because they know if they play him um any more times it's going to release um a clause in his contract which means you have to pay money on him so that's why they've kind of been avoiding playing him and they don't see the value in having Coutinho around he's on very high wages um would I want Tottenham um to be kind of uh taking those wages on on a player who I think we the money could be better spent elsewhere um I'm not convinced on Philip Coutinho, but I want to know your opinions. Would you be interested in getting Coutinho through the door? Do you think he's value for money? Do you think um, he can help improve the team? I want to know your opinions in the comment section below. Um, before we start getting some callers on, let's read through um, let's read through some tweets which people have been tagging me in, and I can react to some of your opinions. Um, let's go through it first of all from sorry. Oh man. Okay, oh we're back. Uh let's look at some tweets. Um 
This one is from Twitch Agro underscore TV. Why doesn't Tottenham show interest in Dumfries and try to side him? Um, I believe um, we should definitely be going for someone like Denzel Dumfries. I think he's a quality right back, a very attacking player, and he could definitely improve our options a right back. And he has the physicality to get him out of certain situations. I believe he has um, the scope to improve massively, especially under a um, coach like Nuno. And I don't know why we're not going for him. Maybe we see him as too expensive. Maybe we see too many flaws in his game. He's six foot. He's um, rapid at the back. And he's very good going forward. Obviously, needs a bit of work defensively. But I believe um, he's one I would definitely look to get through the door. But maybe we see him as too expensive. I, I don't know. I definitely think we should be getting him through the door. Dylan Southerly. We shouldn't get Coutinho. We should be looking at people age, uh, people age max 25 for the first team. We need a team for the future, not stop gaps. This first season may be painful, but we need a rebuild. I kind of agree with that when it comes to Coutinho. Um, I feel like um, when it comes to a rebuild, we need fresher talent, hungrier talent, and not people like uh, Coutinho who come in thinking they're the dog's bollocks and thinking that they they have a right to be in the team. Despite his obvious ability, I just believe Coutinho isn't the right fit for what we need right now. Um, a p big player on big wages who is inconsistent. Um, I believe we should be looking at fresher talent to rebuild the team. So um, I'm not I'm not convinced with him. Clowns to the left of me says, um, if Harry wants to leave, then sell him for a fair price. I don't want anyone playing for my club that doesn't want to be there. Nobody is going to enjoy that. I agree. I agree with that. I think we should get him for a fair price. But when you think about Harry Kane, um, you know, are we ever going to get a more uh, an asset as as valuable as Harry Kane right now? So you can't sell yourself short when you've got Harry Kane, who's a talisman of the team, um, one of the best strikers in Europe. You can't sell yourself short. So you have to make sure you get the best price possible for Harry Kane. I don't think you can sell him um, for anything less than what you're demanding because you're not going to get this opportunity um, to sell Harry uh, to sell a player of Harry Kane's ability. They don't come around often, so you can't sell yourself short. He's got three years left on his deal. Tottenham hold all the cards when it comes to that, and I think even if he is going to push for it, um, I still think that if, we, if, he, if he stays, um, he, I, I, I really believe that he'll be... He'll, he'll knuckle down so I don't believe that it's, it's um, a, a case where he's going to down tools if he leaves so I don't think we should sell ourselves short of what, so, what, whatsoever I think 150 million to price and even if um, even if he's going to push for it until the end of the window unfortunately we, they pay the price or they do one that's, that's how I think about it and um, I understand that Kane's going to push right to the end of the window for this transfer and he's going to make it as uncomfortable as possible for Tottenham to try and accept the deal because he wants to move I completely understand that and people can get angry at him for that I understand that but unfortunately we hold the power right now as much as Kane wants the move. Tottenham hold the power. So we got to stick to our guns and it's up to Man City to pay the money. That's how I see it. Um, I don't I don't believe it's a case of he's unhappy so get rid I don't think it's I don't think it's a case of that I believe it even if he's unhappy um, they got to pay the price um, Rov Shan pick up Rov Shan he says Romero is a great transfer probably the most needed recently I'm not sure if to partner him with Rodham but I think we need to buy 30 million worthy defender alongside him maybe buying a cam like Damsgaard and a solid right back can make us top four candidates um I believe uh yeah top four candidates we need a right back for sure probably well arguably two but definitely one and then another centre back. Um, do we need? Um, do we need a cam? I mean, we have Delhi. We have Lascelles who can play there, um, and Dombele can play there. Um, so I don't necessarily think a cam is desperate. But we definitely need a striker, uh, either to partner Harry Kane or to replace Harry Kane, um, and probably needs another winger because we have Hill, we have Bergvine, and we have Lucas. Um, we have Son as well, so we have four. Um, but is that enough? Maybe. I think we need another attacking player there just to increase competition. So maybe another winger to re if we're going to put ourselves back in the top four conversation. So um, I think top four candidates might be a, a step too far this summer, this season, unfortunately. I just think we've left ourselves way too much to do. We faffed around um, for the manager's situation. I think that is going to cost us in the end of the day. Look, 
there are consequences to your actions. People have to realize that. And it's no, and when you faff around like we did, um, wasting wasting all that time finding a manager, and 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 we ended up getting a manager who we could have got a month uh, a month earlier. There are consequences to that. And it's not as simple as you just get through the door and then you can start planning. That planning should have already been done. That planning at all the clubs ahead of us. They're, they are a month ahead of us at least and probably more in terms of their planning and their recruitment. And Tottenham, unfortunately, are, are, they're playing catch-up and that's the truth. And it's as hard as it is to hear. Um, that's the reality. And yes, um, it, technically it's possible to close the gap. But it's extremely, extremely difficult. And I just feel like Tottenham have left themselves way too much to do from now until the end of the window to kind of close the gap on the top four. And adding to that, the uncertainty of Harry Kane, I think it's, you can pretty much rule out top four um, the next season. And we've got to focus on getting the players through the door um, that can make us back into a top five team, getting that fifth position, the best of the rest, and winning a trophy. I think... Fifth and a trophy is the best we can hope for next season. Um, I don't think top four is possible, and I think we're going to have to be sitting another year out of Champions League, unfortunately. Unless Kane de- stays and knuckles down, and we get um a, and we rebuild the back line, then maybe top four is an option. But we'll have to wait and see. Kev Williams with the super chat, he says, "Sim, this is a rebuild. It will take a few seasons, and that's the truth. And that's why Kane wants out." because he can't afford to uh, at 28 years of age to be has to, um, hanging around for another rebuild. And I, I agree with that. It is a rebuild. It is going to take a few seasons. Hence why I'm saying top five and uh, trophy is the best Tottenham could hope for next season because I think the gap between us and the top four is only growing and we have way too much to do um, to close that gap between now and the end of the window. And I don't believe we have the time or the resources to do it this window. So, And and not only that, I believe that the teams above us are only growing away from us. So even you can even think Leicester at the moment, the gap's increasing away from them because they've made some good signings this summer so far. Aston Villa have now got £100 million to spend and They've signed Leon Bailey and they're going to be, a, um, you know, we'll see how they're obviously they're losing Grealish, but we'll have to see how they react um, with, to getting money. So I don't believe um, it's possible to get top four and top five might be out of reach. I think top six and a trophy probably represents um, something of a decent season at this point. Ariane um, is in the uh, is. Uh, in the tweet saying come watch we are tottenham tv stream on general spurs talk if you need to pass some time like i do it's always nice on the stream and i haven't promoted him in a while come while you can uh you won't regret it oh that's very nice harry ann i'm not going to react to that but definitely listen to him he's speaking facts and also while well, while i got you here if you really if you scroll down like the stream it really does help us support um the channel it really does help with the um with the algorithms it really does help us be seen and on the recommendations and all that kind of stuff so if you're enjoying the stream if you're enjoying the content really would help if you scroll down smash the like button um it really does help us um support the channel so really would appreciate that um and also give us a subscribe if you're enjoying the content and, and click the bell as well you'll get um notifications whenever new new um clips new streams are live or new videos are right to your door so really would appreciate that look at that another 100 likes straight away really uh, that really does help luke diamond with um the super chat um he says um if our center backs and cms are solid we can give coutinho freedom he would be deadly made us look lee one standard when he played for munich um unlock stores um i don't think it was just coutinho who did that but i i i see your point i do think he's got a lot of quality and maybe if he's allowed a free role and we have solid foundations for him he could be a success i'm, I'm not saying he couldn't be i just feel like when you've got that amount of money or spending that amount of money on him it's just a massive risk that you could placate if you get a player who has a bit who has more potential to grow and more and more a bigger scope a bit younger and isn't um and you're not wasting too much money on a player like Coutinho I just feel like um unless we're getting a good loan deal for him um when when other options dry up I don't know if it's a deal that I'm that interested in for a very inconsistent player um Neoni Allen says, "I don't think he's. I, I don't think Kane is isolating in Florida. I think he's just coming up with excuses. It could be no one has official communication from both parties, and therefore speculation. What's certain is the club communicated privately with his team." 
yeah, that's true. Um, I, I, I think that's uh, that that that's a decent point. Maybe that's the case. Um, I guess we have to wait and see how it all plays out with the Harry Kane situation. Ali Hassan, uh, Ali Hassan says regarding the Conference League, we need to keep roll. We need we keep rolling our eyes at the mention of it. But why are we thinking of the football pyramid? Only a few months ago, we slated the Super League. Imagine the good it will do these smaller cl- these smaller obscure clubs when Spurs turn up. Yeah, but I'm not. In- I'm just not interested in being involved in a third rate or Euro- European competition. Uh, pe- look, people can say what they want at me um, for, for denigrating this competition, but they UEFA clearly don't care about this competition. It's on at the same time as Europa League. They don't haven't even given it its own um, theme song. They've given the Champions League and Europa League their own theme song. Yet yeah, they've given the Conference League just the same theme song as the as the uh, Europa League. If you win the Conference League, you get a Europa League spot, which isn't the most glamorous of prizes. Um, it's it's it. You're in a competition which doesn't offer much glory. Uh, winning a third rate European competition is the equivalent of winning the Intertoto. Inter- Toto Cup, which they abandoned a few years ago because no one was interested in it. Um, this Conference League, I don't understand the point of it. I don't understand why they've created this Conference League. Um, um, there's no, there is absolutely no point in a club like Tottenham Hotspur being in it because you, you you're winning a, comp- a, a European competition which is completely third rate. There's no glory in winning the Conference League. I'm sorry to say this, uh, as much as hard to hear. There is no glory. Uh, in winning it people say it's still a trophy it doesn't matter when, when you're competing against third rate European clubs no one and, and you get a Europa League spot so what's the point in it you don't get a Champions League spot Tottenham don't even want to be in Europa League our aim is to be in the Champions League so if you're if the prize for winning this is a spot in a competition which again we don't want to be in because we want to be in the Champions League you're better off finishing fifth or sixth than than winning the, the Conference League because it's extra games, it could prevent you in your league performance. And, compre- and I would rather win a domestic cup. There's better, there's better competition in the FA Cup and League Cup than there is in the Conference League. So I agree. I think there's more glory in that. There's more glory in winning the domestic trophies, and there is, and there is this Conference League. I'm honestly not. I'm sorry. I am not bothered about this Conference League. Ben disagrees with me. He says we beggars can't be choosers. We haven't won a trophy in um, however long, 13 years, and we got to take every competition we are in seriously. I understand that. Way of thinking, but I'm sorry. This conf- this conference league is the final straw for me. It's the, it's the kind of bottom of the barrel. It is the worst competition that we've been in for a long time, and um, I'd much rather um, be winning other competitions. The conference league, it, it doesn't interest. It just doesn't interest me. Obviously, if we win the conference league, I'm I'm going to be happy, and I'll and I'll and I'll I'll celebrate winning a trophy, even if it is a third rate conference league. But if I'm honestly not that bothered about it. I'm just not that interested in going far in this competition or um, putting any of my mental energy into this Conference League when there is not much to it. There isn't. There aren't many good. There aren't any good teams in it. The the prize isn't very good. The money is pennies on the dollar. There's nothing to be won in terms of money in this competition. There's literally it's a it's a waste of time. I'd rather not be in it. I'm going to be honest. I'd rather not be in the Conference League than be in the Conference League. Um, if, the annoying thing is if the if our league our league finished two years ago would have gotten a Europa League spot and I'd, and and Europa League is a lot more prestigious competition. There's a lot better teams. There's the bigger prize money. There's bit and and you. You get a Champions League spot for winning it. So I see the value in Europa League. I see the value in winning it. It get you get glory as well because you're winning um, a, a very good competition. But when it comes to the Conference League, I'm sorry, there is no advantage to it. Yeah, you win a trophy. We won a trophy for winning the Audi Cup. So what? Tell what's the difference? I don't see too much difference. There is. I don't see the. If someone can explain to me the value in the Conference League. I would love to know it. I would love to know. I want to know any point of value in the conference league apart from just the fact it's a trophy. That's all I. That's all I'm hearing people saying it's a trophy. So you got to take it seriously. If that's your only excuse, then I don't know if that's much of an argument. I don't see. I personally just don't see any value in the conference league. I don't see it. Um, I want to know people. Maybe people can call up and give me their opinions. But I just. I'm. I personally don't see it. Nicola Mola in a, in the in the super chat he says Mola is a baller um, should we look into him young too he was brilliant at the Euros for um, Denmark he was absolutely fantastic um, unfortunately we have Cessnion we have Regulon and we have Ben Davis although there's rumours Davis might leave but um, uh, is he one. Um, 
is he one to look into? I guess if Davis leaves, if and we're looking at a left back, I would definitely look in. Look, he would be one of the options, but um, I don't think at the moment it's a necessary uh, signing, seeing as we already have um, Mailer and we have Regulon. So I don't know. Um, I don't. I don't think it's one that's a that's a uh, a priority. Um, Brendan saying Grealish to City getting close. That's true. Peter says. Um, would you want our attacking signing this season to be a winger or a cam position? Um, good question. I think it's a weird one because our cam options are Delhi and Dombele and Lacelso. But and Dombele and Lacelso are arguably better deep than they are in cam. That just leaves Delhi. So you're arguably arguably we need a cam position to cover for Delhi but then we do have other posi- we all have other players who can play cam and then you got in our sitting midfielder position we have Winks um Hoybier, Skip at the moment so at the moment you're thinking but then you also have Lacelso and Dublé in the deeper positions as well so it's difficult to know are the, if you're taking um cam and deeper positions into account Technically, we have Hoybier, Winks, Skip, Delhi, Lo Celso, and Ndombele. Is those six players enough? If we play 4 3 3, for example, are those players enough to cover those six positions? Maybe yes. So then you may be thinking a winger. We've got Berg, Vine, Son, um, uh, Lucas, and um, Hill. Do we, uh, I think maybe quality wise, you might need, an, I'd rather play 4 3 3 and maybe invest in another winger. <clears throat> Sorry, I think I'd rather play 4-3-3, invest in another better quality winger than maybe play 4-2-3-1 and buy another cam. Uh, I just feel like 4-3-3 is maybe where we're going to be headed next season. That's my that's my feeling. Um, Koi um, says, would you take Skriniar and Martinez for Kane? Um, Skriniar and Martinez for Kane. Well, and sell him to Inter Milan. But anyway, uh, I think... Well, I, I don't think... I think if there's promise of more signings on top of that, then I don't think that's the worst deal in the world. I don't think that's the worst. If, you have, if we have Romero and Skriniar partnering each other and Martinez replacing Kane and then we get maybe a couple more enforcements at the back, um, then... Uh, maybe that's not the worst deal in the world. I probably I wouldn't say no. I definitely wouldn't a hundred percent say no. Um, out of context, Ali Gold. I, I can't really hear that. I'll have to watch that later. Unfortunately. Um, uh, let's see what else people have been tweeting us. God save the skip. <laughs> Love that name. I'm surprised a player like Edward has gone under the radar from a lot of Premier League sides. I think he'd be a great price for us. Also, if City offers 100 million plus Ake as a possibility, would you? Would we take that? I feel like we would. No, Ake has shown at the moment. Um, I think he's shown at the moment he's not ready to step, make that step up. He's again very injury prone. Um, hasn't really done it for Man City, so I don't believe he's a player um, that interested in having at Tottenham. And I don't believe as well you make you make up that fifty million with just Ake. So definitely not. Um, Edward, I agree. He was apparently set to sign for Leicester, but for some reason that um, that broke down. So I'm not sure why what happened there. Um, Okay, a lot more tweets coming through. I'll come back to Twitter um, in a bit. Let's start getting some callers on. Um, I want to know people. I want to get uh, people's opinions. Let's get people on. Let's get... All right. Ariane is in the background. Let's get Ariane on. Uh, he, oh, sorry. My, uh, my headphone just came unplugged. Give me a sec. There we go. Uh, Ariane. Good to see you, my friend. Hello. How are you doing? Yeah, I can hear you. How are you doing, my friend? All right. awesome. Doing good, doing good. First of all, I want to say thank uh, you for the uh, shout-out on Twitter. Appreciate that. <laughs> Appreciate the uh, course, big up. Um, also, I want to say commiserations on the potential departure of uh, Ben Davis. I know it's going to hit you hard. I know it's uh, a sad day, the day Ben Davis leaves. <laughs> And I'm sure oh, you'd rather I'd, I'm sure you'd rather see Kane out the door first before <laughs> Ben Davis. But according to Romano, it's a possibility. Here's the thing. What happened was this morning I woke up, right? Because I missed the here we go because I was asleep. So I wake up and I'm like, oh, let's go. Here we go. Oh, my God. What a great day in the uh, Twitter group chat. And then somebody's like, oh, hey, by the way, there's this as well. And I'm like, did you seriously have to show me that right now? 
<laughs> yeah, he showed me the Davis thing right after I saw the here we go. I'm like, I'm, I'm having a good time here, and you have to just tell me that Davis is about to leave. Um, but um, <laughs> Romano <laughs> came for Romano chose violence today. That's what he chose yeah, when, he, when Ariel woke up. Um, but I want to know some of your opinions on um any, any of the stories I've been talking about. First of all, the Kane stuff. Um, mm-hmm. there's all, first um, of all, with Grealish hap- looking like that's happening, I want to know how you think that impacts the Kane deal. And also, I want to know, with all the conflicting stories about Kane, some saying he's in Florida, some saying he's isolated from the Caribbean, Like, what do, where do you think the truth is at the moment with Harry Kane? And what, what do you think is like PR spin from his camp? And what do you think is reality? It's hard to know, isn't it? Look, at the end of the day, when... <sighs> Look, look, so many players, like even Lo Celso, who won the Copa America, let's not forget, he had something to celebrate. He had reasons to stay, and maybe he, he was celebrating a Copa America win, first time for Argentina in a long, long time, and he showed up to training even before it was due. I just can't wrap my head around any real reason why England captain would genuinely be late because he was on vacation too long, unless there was a serious cause. It doesn't make sense to me, right? a model professional like Harry Kane, who we've known has built a reputation for so long here to be very professional, very hardworking. I think he is trying to force a move out. I can't imagine the situation, like unless he has COVID, which I, uh, which we would have known about. Um, I can't see any other way for him to actually like be late to training two days, and not, not show up training two days in a row. Unless yeah. something was happening intentionally. No, it I think I think I think I think that's pretty much confirmed something is happening. Mm-hmm. I think he I think he purposefully stayed late on holiday mm-hmm. um to basically know that he's gonna have to isolate and come back to training late. I think that does seem mm-hmm. to be the case. Um right. do, and but do you think um if he does come back, which seems he is, if he comes back later in the window in the week this week, um ha- and he does return to training, how does that affect things once he comes back? Is he is he still like? Is it maybe is is he going to be reintegrated back into the team? Do you think maybe big long conversations we will have with Levy about trying to sort the move out? How do you think it plays out once he comes back? Um, look, Levy, we know he, he's not going to sell him for any less than like one hundred and fifty, which is the asking price. As far as my opinion on what I think should happen, I don't want him anywhere near the club anymore. Um, yeah, you're that you're that you're that serious about it. I'm I'm very serious because look, you can't disrespect. I don't care what it is for whatever reason. You can't disrespect the club like that. Not showing up training, vice captain, not showing up to training two days in a row because of a, some sort of move. You can you can express your opinion. He could have come out and said he wants to move, but you cannot not show up training out of trying to force it. I want him to be sold as soon as possible. Of course, I want the right price, and if we don't get the right price, of course, I still think he's a quality player and I want him to stay. But in my mind, he's I want him gone as it, the first opportunity. Like, well, even I, I even even him. if he comes back to training and he says, "All right, I made my protest, but I'm not going to take this any further," you still say you've done you've done what you've done, and that's it. I, I just don't think he can be committed to the club anymore after that. Like, I I, I don't think I, it'll always be in the back of his mind. Like, it doesn't. You can't go that far. You can't make the conscious decision and say, "All right, I think it's time for me to skip training because I think now is the time." to force me you can never be 100% back into it after you do something like that because that's a serious decision that you have to make as vice captain of a club as a star player of the club the highest earner of a club you're the example for everybody all the youngsters coming through all the people in the team they look up to you you're a leader by example when you do that you're making a serious conscious decision and there's no way to come back from it in my life so you think even if um, say Man City don't stop up the cash and, and Kane ends up staying um, well, where where does that leave the situation then? Do you think, Kane, do you think Kane downs tools and starts you know playing up a bit, or do you think he would knuckle down if he was forced to stay? Look, I, I think he also is aware that he has to earn his move. I think if he's forced to stay at the end of the day, he's gonna keep keep playing the way he does to attract the same offers that he has before. I don't I don't think he's stupid, right? So I, I think he's still gonna perform. Uh, and my phone is at two percent, so I'm gonna have to plug it in. You might hear some echoes, so I apologize about that. Um, it's all right. No, it's fine. I I don't hear an echo. Okay, sorry about that. So um, anyway, um, as far as like if we don't get the right offer, I think Kane is going to probably play a little bit. And he's probably gonna go the next summer when Kane, when oh, I, I think City's is genuinely with with a hundred million on Grealish. 
they're not going to be able to spend the 150 not because they don't have it but because they're going to like launch some sort of ffp shit storm if they do that 250 million and two players something's going to go wrong i think that's the main problem so they have to wait some kind of they're going to have to wait a window or two to get him again and i think in a season he's going to be gone even if he doesn't go this window and i think that's what's going to be the the like the worst case scenario because i don't think he's going to stay here for much longer yeah i agree and um but but uh... Um, when you say you say um, Ariane, you know he uh, should never disrespect the club and everything, which is obviously I agree with you. Um, I think it's a bad thing what he's doing. But when you look at Kane's perspective, if if Levy is refusing to sell, even if Man City apparently. According to the Athletic, Levy's current position is under any circumstances. He's not selling Kane to a Premier League team under any circumstances, even if they are for the right money. That's the Tottenham's position right now. So if you look at Kane's position, um, if it, do, you, do you think what what... How else is he is he going to be able to get the move if he doesn't put pressure on Levy and Tottenham to accept an offer from Man City? If he if he turns up to training and be and continues to be the model professional like he always has been throughout his Tottenham career, that move is pretty much not going to happen. It's ne it's never going to happen. So how would you how can Kane go about it if if Tottenham's current position is um, they will not sell to a Premier League club because if if Tottenham's position was if if Man City stump up 150 million, they will sell. Then I can then there's, there's that's one thing. But if their current public position is they're not going to sell to a Premier League team under any circumstances, does Kane to get the move? Does Kane have any other option but to put pressure on Tottenham? Um, you make a fair point, but I think um, one thing I, I'm going to use Christian Eriksen as the big example here because we all know what happened with him. He mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, he trained every day, and Mourinho was constantly praising him for being such a professional. But what happens when a player, when his head is just somewhere else? Like I said, you can't perform and commit to a club the same way when you are not 110% into it. And that's what's going to happen. I think even if Kane stays, we're still going to see him be Harry Kane. But we're not going to see Harry Kane that we saw this season, who got top assists and top goals. He's probably going to be second or third or fourth even in the top goal scorer charts. He's not going to get anywhere near the number of assists. And we're going to see a natural decline in his performance because of just he you can't commit yourself more than you are able to. Like he's not going to be able to commit himself after he knows he wants to go. This is not the place he wants to be. He wants to be more ambitious and whatnot. So, I mean, I, I understand that he wants to force his way out, and I get that. But just at the end of the day, it doesn't. It, it feels like the wrong thing to do because you're tarnishing your reputation with the fans and everything. I don't know. It, it just doesn't sit right with me, you know. You think you think after after so many good years, um, skipping a, 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 a few days of training is going to tarnish his whole time with the club? Of course, not his whole time. And even if everybody's mad at him right now, including myself, I'm very mad at him. I know for a fact that in six months after he's sold, we're going to remember him as this incredible legend. Right? Like that's just common sense. Like we're not going to remember him as like some sort of Judas. But mm. what's going to happen is. Uh, it just isn't right for the model profession. Like he is the poster boy of the club. And when you behave like that, right, it's it's different from if he was like, you know, if it was Ndombele doing this or somebody who isn't quite connected to the club, somebody who didn't come through the academy, who we we, we made Kane as well. As much as I would like people don't mention this, well, we made him who he is. Of course, he made him who he is as well. But we picked him up when nobody else wanted him, failed multiple loans, dropped out of the Arsenal Academy. There was a lot of reasons not to believe in him, but we did, and we molded him for about a decade now. And we don't owe him a move. He, he kind of owes us some. So I think it's it's just disrespectful to do what he's doing. Even, even I get it's two days of training. It's not, a, it's not the biggest deal in the world, but he owes at least a little bit to respect the three years on the contract and show up to training. You know what I mean? Yeah, I hear that. I understand what you're saying, um, Ariam. What about uh, just a what about a couple year loan move? Give him a couple years of Man City, let him win some trophies, and then come back to Tottenham and he can finish the job he started. <laughs> um, I'm sure, for I guess. Um, I don't know. <laughs> um, Ariane, there's um, I don't know. I don't know what that noise is. That coming from you? I don't know. If, can you hear that? I don't know if that noise. I can hear something. Um, of, uh, feedback. Um, there's rumours today about Philip Coutinho coming back to coming to Tottenham after you know we nearly signed him two years ago. 
Is he someone who you'd be interested in getting through the door if Kane was to be sold? Or are you not interested in someone like Coutinho? Not as a Kane replacement. If we got him for like on loan with like half his wages, I mean, doesn't hurt, but not someone I'm keen on. Like, if we get him, we get him. If we don't, we don't. You know what it is? Yeah, I agree. I think he's just an inconsistent player. I want, I want to get, actually, Ari, I want to get your opinion on something I was chatting about before um, while we're going through the story of the tweets is um, the Conference League. Uh, there was a tweet saying that, you know, we have to respect the Conference League and despite it being a competition we don't want to be in, you know, it's a, we have to be, it has to be a competition we want to win and, and um, take seriously. What's your opinion currently in the Conference League? Do you see any value in it or do you think it's a waste of time? The thing is, I don't see a lot of value in it, but the trouble with it is that it's a mid-season, it's like a seasonal trophy, right? Mm -hmm. And you can't, because of the tier of teams in it, on one hand, there's not really a value to winning it. On the other hand, you can't really lose it. It's so embarrassing, you know? <laughs> like, it, that's the trouble with it. Like, we're kind of stuck here in this middle point. It's like, we don't even want to be here. We don't want to lose it. We don't want to, we don't care if we win it. It's... Yeah, it's not great. Like you said, I agree with you. I, I'd rather not be in it than be in it. But then, you know, at least it's something for the youngsters, I guess. Like I don't, I don't know. It's but if but even even if we win it, is that a trophy? Where, like, would you rather win the league cup or the conference league? That's the question that I actually was asking. Like, I I think I was gonna. Are they like the same, or is the conference league a little bit better, a little bit worse? But. I don't know. I think they're probably on the same level. Maybe, maybe the conference league a little bit worse, just because of the quality of the teams. I mean, like yeah. And you know, the thing is, the, the the thing is with the conference league, right? You don't get much money. You don't get a Champions League spot for winning. You get a spot in the Europa League. They're not very. They're not any good teams in it. Like, what is the value of it? What what glory is there in winning this competition? There really isn't. It just it's it's a weird. I think the only other team in it, like Roma isn't anything, right? Roma. Yeah, Roma are in it. Yeah, they're actually like the second best team there, right? Mm -hmm. So what is it? A face off against Mourinho in the final? I wonder who's going to win that one. Um, it's written in the then, stars, isn't it? It's written in the stars. Oh, we'll lose to Mourinho in the so final. Won. Yeah, one nil shit house all over the press. Oh, damn, oh they my won. god! They could have made that half trophy with me instead. You know, whatever. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, yeah. All right. Any, 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 any other points you want to talk about, Ariane, before I let you go? Um, Not much, honestly. Just uh, happy that we got Romero, at least. That's one thing. Um, yeah, yeah, that's a positive. Ali, and um, when it comes to Romero, like, do you think, what caliber of signing do you think this, this, this defender is? Do you think he has the ability? Uh, potential to completely revamp our defense or do you think maybe we're paying a lot too much expectation on his shoulders right now it's not the fact that we're putting a lot of expectation on i mean i guess it kind of is because i as much as i like rodan i don't think um with the defense we have you can expect too much still you know regulon good player of, of course uh, romero obviously he signed him brilliant player we know how good he is even Doherty, I'm willing to give a shot because we know how good he's been under Nuno at Wolves. But I think when it comes to that center back pairing, we don't have some. Like the thing with the road on is he's neither like good, like he's not bad, but he's not good. He's not on that level yet. Nor is he experienced. So you have two inexperienced center backs. So it's I don't think we can really say we can revamp our defense until we bring in at least somebody else who has a very high, like a very high quality or of like experience who can lead the back line. So. Like, even a Jerome Boateng, I think. I, I'm not saying we should get him, but I'm saying I'd rather him partnering uh, Romero than I would someone like Rodon because having two inexperienced centre-backs is not something I'm looking forward to. Uh, yeah, I, I, I take your point. I think in terms of having Rodon and Romero, um, I think they're like, in terms of like quality, I think they're both very good. But you're right, the experience wouldn't be there. But at least it's just one of those things where... Not it's not necessarily they wouldn't work. It's just it could take time to work, and would have to be patient. Yeah. And Tottenham fans are not patient, and that's the yeah. reality. <laughs> that's the reality. So I don't think Roden and Romero would be bad per se. I just think you would have to let them work each other out, make their mistakes, and then they could form a formidable partnership in the future. Basically, kind yeah, of thing. Considering we got Romero so late, and we have to start the season with Man City at home, mm -hmm. or at home City or away? I don't mind actually. Know home, we're home. I think. Right. So Man City at home, um, it's it's going to be a rough ride if that's our centre back pairing for the 
for the season. So, well, what we'll be in for a light ride. So the defensive howlers aren't gone just yet, guys, just because Dyer's not <laughs> playing. Do, do not worry. Um, you can you can watch your defensive mistakes still for, hope, you know, hopefully not too long, but probably for a little bit. All right, mate. Good to see you. Good to see you, Ariane. Always good to have you on, bro. And I'll speak to you in a bit. Have a good one. See you guys later. Nice one, man. Um, got a super chat here from Cyan Mukherjee. He says... Would I rather Nuni, um, Noni, Noni Mudeke or Damsgaard? And I think I think Damsgaard right now is a better player. Both are a similar age. Both, I think, slightly different positions. I think um, uh, Madueke is more of a right-sided player. Damsgaard more of a central slash left-sided player. So I think Madueke m- maybe has a more natural place in the squad, but Damsgaard's a better player. Damsgaard, though, on the other hand, is more expensive, and Madueke is... Um, going to be a bit cheaper i think probably madweke i'd rather i'd rather gamble on him um just because um i think he's better fit for the squad english as well doesn't take up a foreign spot um cheaper um so despite dam's god being better i think it's uh it's a less complicated deal so maybe i'd rather go for him a super chat from Carmelo Borg, DJ Melo B. Um, no uh, message, just a super chat. So thank you very much for your message. Um, and that is that. Uh, let me, is there any tweets coming through? Make sure you're sending in your, your tweets of your opinions and content for anything. Uh, let's get another caller on. We have Adam Coys in the background. Let's get Adam on. How are you doing, Adam? You all right? Yeah, all good, Sim. Can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear, my friend. Th- thanks for Fantastic. coming on. Um, no worries. So, um, or any of the topics you want to discuss today? Anything specific? Is there, um, is there... I think, I, yeah, think uh, I think Harry Kane must have heard that he, he needs a meeting with Daniel Levy, and he thought, "I'll go and see the proper Mickey Mouse first, get some advice." <laughs> Brilliant. Well, where, where where do you stand on the whole Harry Kane situation? Is, is are you on the camp where he's being very disrespectful and there's, he's completely out of order, and and he sh- and you can never do this uh, when you're tied down to a three-year contract, or are you on the other side where you can un- understand where Kane's coming from, and it's the only way you can really force the move? I think it's dangerous to have a judgment until we know exactly what's happened. Um, I think if it turns out that something's happened with his family and, you know, his privacy needs to be kept, or if it's just a case of we don't know exactly what's happening, it's really dangerous to fall on either side of the camp. Um, Your heart tells you that, you know, you want him to stay at the club, but your head says if he doesn't want to be there, let him go. But if it all turns out that actually he can't be in because some of his family has contacted COVID, you know, there's so many different variables. And when you're talking about the best striker in Europe, maybe the world, I think we need to be really careful. Um, because like you say, it's, it's the fans that have built him up to be as big as he is. And if he feels mm-hmm. the fans are turning on him as well, he's, he's going to go. He'll be off. I understand that. But when, when there's talks from very reliable sources um, saying that Spurs are set to fine Harry Kane for him not turning up to training. Surely it's that at that stage you've got to accept that it's pr- he, Kane is definitely doing this for, for uh, uh, to make a statement rather than anything um, he can't avoid. Yeah, I mean it's a shame that it's come that far. Uh, when you hear that your, your vice captain's being fined for not turning up to training <laughs> yeah, that that's you know, it doesn't look like it's going the right way or the way that most fans would want it to go. Um, personally, I'm not of the opinion that I want him out of the club. I'm also still not happy with him because, you know, we're playing City in, what is it, 10 days' time? Mm-hmm. And he's our best player by far, and we need him. One thing I will say is that I've seen a lot of names floated around about replacing Kane. My biggest concern is that we've never replaced Ericsson. And if you have a look at last season, Kane had to do two jobs because there was no one providing for the team. So if in a if in a world where we do sell Kane, if we if we buy another striker, it might be someone that's absolutely fantastic. If we still don't have a player that's capable of creating the chances, we're still going to be back at square one. Yeah, and I think that's a good point. And I think that's why we're hearing rumours today from the Evening Standard that Tottenham are going to look to bolster their cr- the creative side of the team. Uh, now they've got Romero through the door. Um, do you what think, side? though, yeah, like, da- like Damsgaard or Mad- Madweke, that's what they're saying. They're going to hopefully... Uh, yeah, what, sorry, you're saying the Romero signing is a great signing. Yeah, what a signing. 
Are you, you're, are you, where do you stand on him in terms of, do you really believe he's one, the, the player who can really help revolutionise Tottenham's back four and help um, really take it to a new level? Or do you think maybe for a player who's 23 years of age, has, um, hasn't had, uh, despite having a lot of experience in the past couple of years, hasn't had too mu- too mu- that long at the top of the game, are we putting too much expectation on his shoulders so early on? I think given our defensive situation at the moment, he's going to have pressure regardless because every Tottenham fan I've ever spoken to is sick to death of Dyer and Sanchez. Yeah. So this guy is going to come in straight away, I would imagine, and partner one of them. Uh, I should imagine. I can't imagine him being kept out until uh, until he's absolutely necessary. But I think he's going to have a lot of pressure anyway. But I think he will be that change of change of pace. He's got a bit more strength than the two we've got at the moment. And I think as long as he's not as accident-prone... I think he's just going to shine even better. So, yeah, I'm I'm really excited to see him in a Spurs shirt. And are you happy as well what the deal represents in terms of Tottenham seem to have pushed the boat out a bit in terms of price, uh, 50 million euros plus 5 million in add-ons, which um, supposedly we've gone closer to Atalanta in terms of what their asking price was and Atalanta didn't really drop what they were asking for. Um, is that a step in the right direction from a uh, transfer point of view that... Um, for once, Tottenham seem to make sure they get their man instead of missing out on him for a few million. Yeah, I mean, it just worries me when you see those kind of figures thrown around, having a season affected so heavily by COVID. You know, where is this money really coming from? It, I'm hoping it's just that, you know, we have revenue from other players and salaries, etc. But when you see a player of that that ilk come through, it, it worries me a little bit that actually maybe we're spending the money like we did with the Gareth Bale situation. Yeah, but you got to think, uh, we got um, some money out the door for Foyf. Um, we've got some, we got well, obviously one million now for a uh, Joe Hart. We've got Toby Alderweireld out the door. Um, uh, when selling, obviously, Lamella was included in the Hill deal. So we got a lot of wages out the door then. We probably saved some money by including Lamella um, in the deal. Um, so, I think when you look at those uh, four four transfers, um, I think that you know, and you take that into account in the Romero deal, we're probably not spending as much as you think. Maybe when it when it when you yeah. take that into account, and so maybe really we can afford. Maybe really we can afford to. Right, to yeah, yeah I me too. Right. I really hope you're right. <laughs> <laughs> me too. Um, in terms of. Um, well, me and Ariane before we're talking about the Conference League. Where do you stand in the Conference League? Is it anything? Is it a competition that um, you would like to see us win, or is it what something that you think is a complete waste of time? Um, I don't think it's a waste of time. You don't think it's a waste of time? No, but only because I think if our season is going to be, you know, focused on including the youth players and getting their minutes on the pitch, if we weren't in it, how many minutes are those youth players going to get? If that's one of the key things that the new manager was told about, he's probably thinking, right, well, I've got at least eight or nine matches where I can field a youngster, rest some of the first team, integrate them with the first team and really see what crop of players he's got coming through. Because players are different from a training pitch to a real match. Um, I, I, I just think it's, you know, it's another opportunity for us as fans as well to see your youth players that you don't see all the time. I can't wait to see Dane Scarlett. I think he's going to rip it up. I really hope he's going to, um, you know, show Tottenham fans that there's something exciting there for the future. But I just think it's, it's extra exposure for our young players to get in the pitch um, and hopefully, you know, make a move on the first team. Is that the so the is that the only value for you in terms of are you are you interested or bothered about winning the competition and things like that? Do you think there's like any glory in Tottenham being winners of the Conference League, or would you rather much see us win a FA Cup or a League Cup? I'd rather us win a, an English competition, absolutely. But that being said, in my lifetime of supporting Tottenham, I've only ever seen us raise one trophy. So, you know, I wouldn't care if it was a plastic cup. <laughs> Any cup will do at the moment for me. Um, it would just be nice to have something to, to hold against the club and be proud of them for. Fair enough, Adam. Um, I understand that opinion. Um, but I don't know, just for me, I just, it seems like there is nothing to interest me in winning the competition. And I don't see it. There's not. I understand that we haven't won anything for so long, but I just feel like this conference league is, um, apart from 
as you say, giving younger players a chance to to get on the pitch in competitive football. It does, there's nothing for me that it like. There's no money. There's nothing. There's no prize when you win it. No, that's a, that 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 excites me. The quality of teams in the competition is is completely dire. It's even worse than Europa League, and you saw the dross that's in Europa League. So it's like. What is there to get excited about for this trophy? Like, I, 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 I don't see anything to get excited about. But, um, but anyway, Adam, it's really great. Look, is this the first time you called in? Yeah, man. Um, I've been with the channel for uh, pretty much since we went into lockdown. So I watch your content every day, and it's it's really helping with um, you know, making us feel all included as a little Tottenham family. It's really good. Um, just, I appreciate just that, one man. little point. Go for one it. One little point, if I if I may, before I leave you guys. Please go for it. When are we going to sell Harry Winks? When? Uh, that's a good point. Um, when? I, in terms of Harry Winks, apparently um, he is available, but it's, at the moment it seems as though we're asking for too much money. We're asking for around twenty-five million. Um, he seems apparently happy to stay and fight for his place, and there doesn't seem to be any clubs coming in for him for that price. So I think at the moment it looks more likely to me that he's going to stay this this summer than he's going to leave. But um, it all, all depends. It all depends if someone comes in for him. I think apparently Nuno as well wants to give him an opportunity to prove himself. And I think from a club point of view, he's at a good age. He's um, English, um, uh, so he's homegrown. So I think at the moment there is no point from Levy's point of view selling him for anything less than a decent price. Um, and might as well. And if Nuno wants to give him a chance, then you might as well see what you can do. So that's what the state of play seems to at the moment. I'm I'm, I'm personally hoping that Oli Skip moves ahead of him in the pecking order next season because I think Oli Skip to. has a lot more he has to because I think he's hungrier, he he's to. got more potential and he's the one who's on the up, uh, on the upward trajectory. But it looks like Winks is going to be hanging around for a bit longer. I just, I, in my head, I just, from what I see on the pitch, I can't think of another player that not doesn't do as much, but I can't think of another English midfielder that gets as many chances and still produces as little as he does. I know it's a team sport and that there'll be haters on there for that, but it's it just feels like he's had his time. If, he, if there was something there to have proven, surely he must have done it by now. And it just concerns me that we need money for, for other signings. Right back still not tied up yet. If Kane goes, we still need a striker and we need someone to create chances. And then we've got Winks, who is probably our fifth choice midfielder. I would rather play Delhi on Dumbele and Lacelso all together than, you know, and Skip and Hoiberg. There's five players that are immediately 10 times better than Winks at the moment. You know, I, I can't, I don't understand why people think he's going to come good when he's had so many opportunities, so many, so many times to prove himself. Um, I just personally, I just think his time's up. Cash in, get what you can for him, let him go. And if he revives his career somewhere else, Fantastic, but what's he on at the moment? 40 50 grand a week to kick a ball once a month, <laughs> probably something like that. Look, it's a fair point. I, I can't, um, I, I, I don't um, completely disagree. I think, um, I'd personally, if we do get a good price for Winks, I'm happy to see him go. I do think, um, a lot of the fan base has, um, so, like they they can't see a lot. I think a lot of people don't see the good sometimes Wings can do. I think he had a dreadful season last season. I can't disagree yeah. with that. I think he was absolutely shocking last season. Pro definitely his worst season in the Spurs shirt. But I think he has had previously um, good spells and good games for Spurs. And I think maybe if Nuno sees something in him, it's worth giving him one more shot. That's why that's how I feel um, when it comes to Wings. However, if a good deal comes to our to us. I'm, I'm, I think Spurs should definitely consider it, um, seriously consider it. But I think it looks more likely he's going to stay at the moment. So no point complaining about it. <laughs> That's how I see it. <laughs> All right. Keep up the content. It's really good, guys. Really, Thank really you, Adam. Please call, please call in again. It was a really good call, man. Really appreciate you calling. Take it Thanks easy, guys. Thanks a lot, mate. See you soon. Bye. Uh, thanks for coming on. Come on, you Spurs. Um, a couple of super chats here. Cyan Mukherjee again. He says, I think Joe Lewis has finally ga gave in the cash flow we needed this season. Um, Enoch out might have worked in some way. Um, fact, Lewis is the 41st rich richest person in the world. Is that true? 41st? That's quite high. Surely not. That's a bit too high. Maybe in England. In the world? No way. Um... 
Let, what else? And then a super chat from Aaron G. He says, I prefer Sabitzer a cheap price and can cover anywhere in the field. Milenkovic also available. If Kane... If Kane sold, also a striker, and still have spare money. Um, in terms of Sabitzer, it looks like he might be on his way to buy Munich. So um, I don't know. Um, I don't think Sabitzer is unfortunately a viable option anymore. I think he might have been um, a few months ago when Tottenham looked like they were challenging Champions League and he had six months left of his contract. And Tottenham still under Mourinho looked like they might snatch that fourth spot. But seeing the mess we're in now and Kane leaving and uh, why would Sabitzer want to come here right now? I don't see that. I don't see that. Um, but let's get Brian Dechel on. Come on, Brian. At Tottenham, uh, Tottenham on tour. Is that, is, is that a new thing? It, Let's get Brian is, on. It is, mate. I was going to talk about that near the end. Basically, Brian and I, Brian Island and I have uh, had to leave Tottenham away. Oh, sorry uh, to uh, hear uh, that. Well, no, it's, it, it's all amical. It's just basically seeing now that Brian Island and I are doing Monday to Friday nine to fives. Um, after COVID, now with the world's getting back to normal, we just can't commit to obviously all the the things we had set because of the time differences so it just became uh, too hard to too hard to do so we all, all had a sit down and then we uh we just literally said the easiest way to go about this is obviously we're still going to be on each other's channel and support each other and everything it's just uh a lot easier time difference wise and obviously monetization if it comes in at any point registering it do we register it in england do we register it in canada um it just became very complicated. So it's just been the easiest shame, but the easiest way to do it. So Tottenham oh. on Tour is the new channel. All right. Well, everyone go subscribe to Tottenham on Tour and Tottenham Away, of course, if you haven't exactly. already. Um, well, good luck on uh, the new channel, Brian. And I ho hopefully it's a massive success for you. Um, looking forward to the content on there. Um, what is there any specific um, topic you want to discuss uh, what on, coming on today? Is there anything you want to get off your chest? No, I mean, not really. I mean, I, with the Harry Kane incident, I just think uh, it, it has been directed at the wrong person. But the, the main thing we have to look at is, and I hate talking about this on, on this channel of all things, we just have to take a look at Arsenal. Everything that happened at Arsenal, we had a very, very, very close w watch of what was happening and laughed about it and had the, the song saying, um, saying uh, eight years since you've won F4 and everything. And... It's basically become us. We had it very, very close quarters of what was going on, and we had a very close look at what was happening. And it, it, it's happening to us. But, but the great thing is, uh, obviously, Romero, which is a huge thing. Yeah, that's a, that's a massive signing. And when it, when it comes to Romero, it's set to be completed in the next forty eight hours. Um, so that's a massive, massive boost in uh, what has been a very difficult week so far um, for Tottenham. Yep. Um, when it comes, when it, in terms of Romero, though, um, he's obviously coming in with um, with a lot of promise and a lot of Tottenham fans pinning their hopes on him being the saviour of our defence and improving us and improving the defenders around him. Um, given, you know, he's only really had two years at the top, top level, uh, performing um, at the top level, despite him getting Serie A Defender of the Year last year, and he obviously was in the Argentina team that won the Copa America. Are we maybe putting too much expectation on a very on a defender who's 23 years of age? Um, he has to adjust to a new league, and he has to adjust to a new system where, when he was at Atalanta, he was very used to a very specific, very aggressive attacking system at Atalanta, and he's going to need to adjust. Do you think maybe there's a bit too much expectation on his shoulders or do you think we're right to expect um, um, a very good class defender coming through we're, we're, we're right to expect a very 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 good defender coming through but I think he needs he does need a partner he most certainly needs a, a partner well, I wouldn't say of exactly his quality but of someone better than what we've got maybe a Roden um, to, to bring forward but I think there's a, a better uh Defender we need to get. We need to get a partner for him because obviously a lot of Argentinians in the Italian league do very, very, very well. Um, and I, I just feel we need another defender to help him without a doubt, without a doubt. Um, Rodan is a possibility, but we need two or three decent, decent defenders um, and we do not have them. We do not have yeah. them. So we, 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 it's, it's a very good start. It's a very, very good start. That's all I will say. But I do mm. believe that it's he's not the the be all and end all to sort out the whole defence. 
Yeah, and it seems like Tommy Asu could be joining him after, now they're out of the Olympics. Um, it seems like that deal could be done. Um, but to, apparently Tottenham see him more as a, more of a right back than a uh, centre back, although he can play in both positions. Um, if we do get Tommy Asu through the door, um, if we had um, uh, Romero, Roden, Tommy Asu, and Dyer with um, uh, maybe getting Doherty and another right back in, is that enough for you? Or is that still well, lagging behind? Tommy Asu is the one that I'm very, very excited about. I'm really, really, really excited about him and, uh, and really want him. Um, I'd rather have Gary Mabbott play than Eric Dyer, in all honesty. I'd rather bring Gary Mabbott back into the squad than, uh, <laughs> than Dyer. Uh, I'd, I'd give Rodan a chance. I'd, I'd give, I'd, I don't want Tanganga going on loan. Um, if he does, I certainly don't want it to be Galatasaray. Um, but... I think Roden should be given the chance to play with someone. I mean, if you said to me it's going to be Regulon, um, Roden, Romero and Tobiasu, let's just say it right back, I'm happy with that. I'd be yeah, very yeah. happy with that. Very happy with that. But do you think that's enough to um, be in contention for top four? Do you think that that defence no. puts us in good stead? No, 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 no. I mean... We, we, we've got to get this top four thought out of our head. I mean, please God, the year after next, or, or year after this season, then we could certainly challenge for it. But at the moment, this one is let Nuno get his feet under the table. Let him do what he's got to do. Uh, we still, just because we saw that defence out, which is the big, big problem we need to address. We still don't know what's going on with Harry Kane. We do need another striker, whether he stays or goes. We need another, crea we certainly need a creative midfielder. I agree with everything you said about... Uh, uh, Le Celso and uh, Undumbele being uh, not C uh, uh, CAMs, they, 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 like, they need to play a bit deeper in advance as opposed to sticking up there. Um, so I think we need to uh, get that creativity. Do you know what? I, I, I might be one of the only ones, but if Coutinho walks through the door, I wouldn't be too unhappy. And yeah, well, even, or even, if, even if it's big wages, big money, do you think it's worth it? Well, as you said, um, we've got a lot of wages off the bill. And mm -hmm. you look at it, we could go and get someone who, don't get me wrong, he hasn't had the best start since he's gone to, or had the best uh, since he's moved from Liverpool to Barcelona. But if we get a Coutinho in, yeah, you may be paying bigger wages, but what you do know is A, knows the language back inside out, speaks fluent English. B, knows the league inside out, so he's not got time to settle. This guy will come in ready-made and knows what to do. And if he gets to anything that he did for Liverpool, then we've got a bargain on our hands. You get somebody like Damsgaard, who I love and thought he was brilliant, no premiership experience, may not be bigger wages. You don't know if he's going to be a flop. You don't know. He could be brilliant. He could be. But I think with a Coutinho, you're, you're kind of taking away that risk with the extra money, which is kind of the whole point that we need to spend big uh, or bigger to get in quality. And Coutinho is premiership proven quality. Yeah, that's fair. But what would you think? Do you think maybe as a consistency problem? Don't we have enough inconsistent players in our team that we need add, add another one? It'll just be very frustrating. We do, but I go back to his time at Liverpool. Would you say he was inconsistent at Liverpool? Because I yeah, I would. I would. I said, I mean, the last apart from seasons. yeah, his last season he wasn't when he was really going for that move for Barcelona. He stepped it up, but then um, ever since he went to uh, Barca, it's gone really downhill, hasn't it for him? It, it has, but if he comes to, if, and this is all obviously if, if he, if he comes to us, he's got a World Cup squad to try and get into. Fair. So what more motivation do you need? Um, and obviously, we presume, uh, any country with World Cup, but I honestly think he would be, uh, it's a risk, don't get me wrong, it's a, it's, a, it's a calculated risk, but it's a risk I would go for just because he does know this league inside out. What, would you spend big money on him or would you like only agree to it if like it's like a loan loan deal with big wages kind of thing? I, I think what we what we had with uh, Pochettino was he was coming on loan and then it would have been an option, no obligation option to buy. that we see from there. So if it came with a with a loan with an option to buy, then yeah. I mean, when you're talking buying him outright and Barcelona whacking on huge money, then no. Then I'd yeah. rather go with a with a dabs guard uh, uh, try. But I think if it, if we can get a loan deal sorted. With the wages and an option, not an obligation, an option to buy, then it's a deal I'd definitely go for. I, I would take it at the top of the queue for the playmaker. 
Um, I want to get your reaction to this, um, uh, Brian. It's not going to be a surprise to you, but the Supporters Trust has just um, uh, released a survey, uh, their annual survey. It says yep. um, the, an annual survey published um, by the Supporters Trust has found that 94% of Spurs fans are currently dissatisfied with the club's on-field performance compared to a staggering 92% and 98% positive rating back in 2018 and 2019 under Maurizio Pochettino. Do you think that's a fair reflection of where uh, how the fans feel on uh, the, uh, the club right now uh completely completely it's one thing that still has done a great video this morning on Tottenham away for the Harry Kane thing and the, the everything listen do you remember that 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 uh, when we moved to the new stadium the slogan was watch us rise yep would you say we've risen since we've moved uh, to that stadium. Pretty much ever since we have released that slogan, we've fallen. <laughs> exactly. I, I, exactly. Listen, I mean, I saw when I came on uh, in the comments, there was loads of people slating me for Levy as normal, which I just take on the uh, like a duck to water. Um, the proof is in the pudding. Um, you look back at it again, and if you look at it, every single big cl- big player we've had, Bell, Berbatov, Carrick, well, the list can go on, Sheringham. We'll go back as far as Sheringham. They've all wanted to leave. And, uh, and oh no, Sherry, I'm sorry, left during uh, Sugar, my bad. Mm-hmm. Sugar, uh, so we'll, we'll say the Carricks, the Berbatovs, the Bales, Walker. the Keens, the Walkers, they've all left because they don't agree that we're going in the right direction. And that's only because of one man. So I, I, I will continue with uh, what I have to say about, about Levy, but obviously people have got to see it. I, I, I'm not going to shout and scream anymore because it's just not good for my health. But this is this has all happened under the stewardess, uh, steward, the the, sh- the ownership of one person, um, and we see it time and time again. And now Kane's asking to do it, and he's doing this. Uh, the anger's at the wrong person, in my opinion, and it always has been. We we, we need to focus where it is. Um, if people are happy with our best players wanting to leave consistently, and then we don't replace them, if that's what they mm. want, if uh, we used to laugh at Arsenal for not winning trophies, and we've got longer. Everything we used to laugh at at Arsenal is now happening very, very seriously at Tottenham Hotspur, and we're allowing it. Um, Brian, I want to get your opinion of what I was talking about before with Ariane and um, yep. Adam on the uh, Conference League. Um, is is this a competition that you're bothered about at all? Do you think it'll be a good thing to win, or are you, or do you think it's a complete waste of time? Right. If 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 we have the blueprint and it says right, the youth are playing this whole way through. The whole way through, maybe a couple of like, let's say, the fringe players that are going to be regular are named in that squad as well. But majority, let's say, seventy-five percent youth, twenty-five percent experience. Then I'm all for it, because then we'll give people like Scarlett, Divine, Harvey White, all the uh, Lavinia, all these people, uh, Niles John, all these people we've seen coming through. They will get the opportunity they need and get first team experience. I think that this will be brilliant if it's something where. We start taking the uh, the first team all over the place to places God God only knows where. Um, then it's a waste of time. But only, like I said, if it's the youth all the way through, then I'm absolutely all for it. It gives so, the first team a rest, and then yeah. But that that would be it. It'll be interesting to see just how good this. Uh, we all keep saying we've got this great youth. Um, we've got this great youth coming through. Uh, it'll be good to see them. It'd be really really good to see them. I mean. I, I, I keep waxing lyrical about uh, Dane Scarlett, thinking he's going to be, and I've said it on many a time, I think he's going to be better than Michael Owen. Mm. Uh, but I actually believe, and from what I've heard, Alf, Alfie Divine is going to be even better. Yeah, and um, of his, they're still very young. He obviously signed a contract um, a few days ago, Alfie Divine, his first professional contract. Yep. Um, and yeah, hopefully we get to see a bit of them in the Conference League. So do you think that's the only value in this Conference League, is just getting the youth on, on the pitch in competitive football? Do you think there's any glory in actually winning it? Do you think there's anything, any positive, like, uh, in uh, actually getting um, a trophy, in that like kind of trophy? Or do you, what, what would you, basically, what would you rather? Um, uh, the League Cup or the FA Cup or the Conference League? What's more valuable to you? FA Cup. FA Cup, without a doubt. The FA, because of my generation, uh, like watching it, it's uh, FA Cup is still so special to me. It's uh, mm-hmm. obviously it's lost its uh, it's lost its magic with a lot of people, uh, and that's because of all football tournaments coming out and the way it's been, where people play their youth team or their their reserves, or whatever. Um, 
So it's the FA Cup is always very, very, very important to me. Uh, the, the League Cup, fantastic. Listen, the, the good thing with it, I, when I heard the caller before Adam, and he said he's only seen the club win one trophy. That, that's just that's just not right. That's not right. Mm. You know, I, 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 I mean, I can't say much. Since I've been alive, I think we've won four. And I can only remember three of them because I was like two when the first one in 81. Um, it's not on. It's it, it's just simply not on. And we need to get silverware. If we, if we win the first conference league, there's going to be some Mickey taking. Oh, my God, you won a Tim Pot Cup, blah, 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 blah. It's a cup. It's a goddamn cup. Um, and people... We, yeah, we the, all, the, 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 the Audi Cup was a cup. Yeah, but that a cup... Yeah, you're right on that part. But yeah, so... <laughs> so but but I would say this is more, even though it's a, a real Mickey Mouse, it's still a European Cup as opposed to to that Audi little preseason tournament. Well, um, about well, is it is this any better than the Intertoto Cup was? Oh God, now you came back in the day. <laughs> um, yeah, I see what you're saying with um, um, with, with the, the comparison. So yeah, let's go back. I'd definitely say FA Cup or League Cup. Over yeah, the, uh, I kind of agree. Over, over, I, the, over the conference league, without yeah, cause, a doubt. Cause, uh, and look, if you, if you're telling me there's like a a big pro, big prize bucket of money to win, then I can understand that. If you're telling me there's a Champions League football to win, I can understand that. If you're telling me there's um, there's some good clubs to beat along the way, um, you know, we're gonna have to play some decent teams. I can understand, but there's nothing. There's nothing for me to get excited about for this conference league. I'd honestly, I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even care if we got knocked out in the playoffs. I wouldn't care. Well, so the truth, Sam. The only thing you're going to get out of it is your uh, passports might get a few more stabs from a f f far off places. <laughs> yeah, true. Actually, I am kind of looking forward to going to Portugal. It should be nice, but I'm honest, honestly, I'm not. Uh, honestly, I'm not too bothered with this competition. I, I honestly wish it just didn't exist. Now, what is the reason this competition exists? I don't see the you point wait. of it. You wait for what more money or more TV rights or whatever. It, but who's uh, watching? Who's gonna watch? Who's gonna watch the Conference League? Uh, just Spurs fans, <laughs> pretty much. Uh, who's gonna watch it? <laughs> it, it? No, you're right. I mean, I, I just don't get it. When, when you make a, when you make a, the, when you make a, a, a new tournament because you want to get. I mean, and it's out of the Europa League. People that can't even get to the Europa League. It's got to the point where qualifying for Europe used to be. Oh my God! Yes, we made it. We're into Europe. And now you make it to the Conference League. It's like, did we really want to do that? Yeah, it, I know, honestly. Yeah, at least, it, but, but but Europa League, I get Europa League. I get it, because it's quite a good competition. There are good, some good teams. I know there's some dross at the beginning, but there are yep. some good teams in it. Um, there's, um, you know, you do get some decent money if you win the whole thing. Um, and um, you get a Champions League spot if you win the whole thing. So it's like, okay, winning this competition actually has a lot of value and it actually worth yep. something. But the Conference League, there's just nothing. There's nothing to it. They didn't even give him its own theme song. <laughs> They couldn't even give enough of a shit of it to give it its own theme song. I know. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you look at it and it's, it's like literally teams like us, and I can understand it for the other, like, into your mums and all. I mean, that's the greatest name of a football club ever. <laughs> but all the, other, uh, all the other teams that are going in for it. But we should be able to. We should be able to get Europa League football via our league performance. Or yeah. at least win it a cup or something. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know what happens if you actually qualify for it via the league and then you win the, the tournament. I don't know how that works out if somebody else gets our spot in some, or we get an additional spot in the Europa League or whatever happens there. Um, but yeah, there, there is no value to winning this. The only, the only value it is, in my opinion, is giving time to the youth, if that's what we do. I hope we do that. Uh, I've got a feeling Nuno's going to place going to take it more seriously than we hope he does but uh or than i hope he does i wouldn't say we but yeah. um but well, we'll have to wait we. and see <laughs> we can say we <laughs> uh we'll have to wait and see how um how that one plays out but brian always good to speak to you my friend always good to have you on everyone go over to tottenham on tour um and subscribe to them and go subscribe to tottenham away as well uh but good to see you brian and uh I'll speak yeah, to you soon gonna, you certainly will buddy have a great day everyone speak to you soon leave you out Leave you out as always. Um, all right. Um, is there any more callers in the back end? That's it. Um, okay. I've, let me uh, read through um, a few more tweets then as we're here um, before we um, before we get uh, leave. Um, there is actually a developing story coming out of Italy um, with uh, Matt Law reporting that 
Chel- the, uh, Lukaku will agree a move to Chelsea if uh, Chelsea can agree a deal with Inter Milan and um, that is uh, going to send shockwaves around Europe if Chelsea can get that deal done Lukaku has really developed a lot over in Italy he's turned into again one of the best strikers in European football and um if they can get that deal over the line, that would really take them up a notch. What a deal that would be um, if uh, they sign um, Romelu Lukaku. And how that would impact Lutaro Martinez, I'd assume, if Chelsea sign um, Lukaku, that would end any hope of Tottenham getting Martinez if Kane was to leave. So I think that, in terms of how it affects Tottenham, that's the uh, that's how I would see it. Um Twitch Agro underscore TV says the Conference League is is for smaller leagues like Swedish and Norwegian who can't qualify for Champions League and Europa League as easy as Tottenham. For them, it's good, but for not big teams as Tottenham, uh, but for but not for big teams as Tottenham. Okay, I understand that. Fair enough. Um, I yeah, it's just no point. I for for me and being in the, in this league, I'm I'm not I'm not uh, uh I'm just not bothered about it. Um. Tom1882 Hotspur says, 110 million plus Jesus for Kane. Would you take this sim? Regarding Kane, it's a disgrace from a petulant child. Kane knew when he was due back. He shouldn't be protesting against his employees, even if it is Levy. Jesus and another solid 50 mil- 50 to 70 million striker. Centre back, centre mid, and right back. I mean, it's a lot to ask for, mate. It's a lot to ask for. And I'd, I'd, I'd rather question whether we can get that all done. Um. Kane shouldn't be protesting against his employer. Well, it depends on how you see it because, yeah, okay, he shouldn't be. But this is a player who's ambitious. He's at the. He's getting to an age where he's not going to last forever. So, like, I don't. I, 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 what do you expect from a player like Kane? If he's not ambitious, then he won't protest. But the Kane's mentality has led him here. We can't praise his mentality throughout his time at Spurs, and then when it leads to him wanting more than Tottenham can offer, we start complaining that he's that he's being petulant. That's just that's what we. That's what he is. He's that player. He's he's exactly the player that he has been over the past eight years. And it's Tottenham's fault for not being able to match his ambition. It's not Kane's fault for wanting more. And that's how I see it at the moment, unfortunately. It's not for money. People say he's claiming for money. Someone, I just read that. Myron Fat. Uh, it's not ambition. It's for money. It's not. It's not. It's ambition. He signed a six-year deal because he loved Tottenham and he wanted to be here for a long term. Um like come on this is not it's not a uh, he's this is not about money echo bdo says um most pundits predicted that we're not going to finish top 7 or even top 10 this season i think we'll finish top 7 uh it could it could easily be 7 but i think we'll finish um top 7 um top it's going to be tough to get top 6 or top 5 honestly it really will but depends how look we've got so much work to do from now to the end of the window um it depends what happens but i don't know i feel like we've given ourselves too much to do personally that's just my my uh, honest opinion on the on the matter um would vlahovic be lukaku replacement very possibly very possibly so this Lukaku to Chelsea could spell bad news for Tottenham in more ways than one, um, unfortunately. Um, all right, there's no one else in the back end, right? There's no one else waiting to come on. All right, guys, um, I think we're going to have to end the stream there. Um, uh, there's no one else uh, coming on for calls, but it's been a nice long stream for you guys. We're going to have um, videos out a bit later today. I'm obviously going to have to watch along later tonight, so tune in for that at 7.30. We will be playing Chelsea in a pre-season friendly um, later on tonight, so uh, tune in for that. But thank you, everyone, for joining us. Um, thank you for all your comments, uh, for your all your likes. I uh, really appreciate it, by the way, before we end the stream, if you do scroll down, smash the like button. It really does help. Um, uh, uh, support the stream and it helps with the algorithms and it helps um, support the channel so I really do appreciate if you do scroll down and smash the like button if you're enjoying the content um, thank you for your super chats all your tweets and everything um, thank you for the callers as well for calling in and uh, having their say uh, thank you again for joining me for another live stream uh, see you all later like subscribe and comment and as always come on you Spurs.